yes, yes. we see the screen yes okay uh should we start last time we arrived here yes okay um so uh, 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 thank you again for having me for uh, uh, in the second um, for a second session for the natural language processing and uh, yes last time we stopped here so we were talking about the deep neural network and like we talked why uh, deep learning now and uh, we disc we described why and we talked about the recurrent neural network and how it is uh, why it is uh, important for the natural language processing applications and uh, we described that mainly we have two types of the um, uh, of the uh, recurrent neural network the GRU and the LSTM okay and uh, then we 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 um, before moving to the to the QA uh, system I just uh, like uh, I decided to add some slides about the NLP terms sometimes I speak about uh, NLP terms and I want to make sure that uh, you understand it uh, okay so so the first term is the corpus so this is really common term that is used in the natural language processing Corp because because NLP is a subfield of the linguistics, by the way. Um, and if you work on the natural language processing, so you work on some uh, area uh, that is called computational linguistics. And this term uh, comes from the linguistics uh, field and it has uh, been adopted to, uh, in the field. Uh, the word corpus itself, it, it's like in Latin, it means the body, the body which contains the physical structure, the bones, the flesh, the organs, everything. OK, and we can say for a collection of uh, uh, we can say a corpus for a collection of um, uh, other parts. OK. Uh, uh, like, uh, for instance, we can say that, uh, uh, for example, we can we can have a corpora, which is the plural of corpus, which is made uh, uh, of different religious texts. Or we can have uh, a corpus of uh, uh, a collection of uh, different uh, movies, reviews. OK, so so uh, we, we call it corpus because it represents the body of the language. So for that NLP task that you work on, uh, for instance, you work on sentiment analysis, you work on speech recognition, the, 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 the data collection that you have, we call it a corpus because it represents the body of the language uh, uh, for, for that task, not the whole language, for, for that task only. And this data can be textual data, so uh, text files, I mean, or it can be uh, speech data, so it can be a collection of wave files. OK, so that terms you will hear and use a lot and in this in this domain. And tokenization, so I, I just wanted to show you the uh, simple example in tokenization. So to split phrases or sentences or the entire documents into smaller units so you can define uh, at which level that you want to tokenize. Maybe you want to tokenize at the sentence level or uh, the phrase level or the word level. So you will have a list of units like this. So that maybe the units can be words or uh, phrases or sentences. And the stop words, you need to know that uh, uh, term. The stop word, it's a list of words that is frequently used in the language, but does not add, uh, but do not add uh, much meaning to the text. But be careful, don't don't remove this stop words blindly from your text. You need to, uh, because sometimes it can hurt the result of your NLP model or, or NLP task. So as we said for the 
limitization and stimming for some task it's useful and for some other task it's not useful so what i mean by 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 the stop words uh, there's like the frequent uh, frequently used words in the language like in english you have uh, uh, like the preposition before after above below about okay the and and the definite article all this does not add anything to the meaning uh, uh, so for text classification, it's OK that you remove the stop words and you apply a stemming and limitization if you want. Because because you uh, reduce the dimensionality and by the way, you can have this uh, from the NLTK library, which is one of the uh, most uh, uh, useful libraries for uh, natural language processing besides Spacey that I talked about that I showed you uh, last uh, session. And for, uh, for Arabic, by the way, NLTK support the, uh, the, uh, the uh, so you need just to replace this you, with Arabic and you will have this list. So as you see here, the list is very long uh, compared to English. And uh, I would like to highlight that uh, not only that you have a stop words uh, uh, for a specific language, you can also have a stop word in uh, like the domain stop word. What I mean by domain stop word is the stop word that is used uh, uh, based that that is uh, that can be defined based on the based on the nature of the text. So imagine that we have. Um, um, a um, hotel reviews. So you have some common words that is used in hotel reviews, and it is useful to to identify it and remove it for, from your text uh, if you want to classify the text, for instance. So uh, you have this generic stop board, and sometimes you have a domain a specific stop words for that depends on the nature of the data, so it's it's really useful also to identify it because it exists in all documents, all your collection, so it's useful to remove it. If you have any question, please don't hesitate to open your mic and uh, in, interrupt me at any time. And um, Dr. Nabil, uh, Dr. yes, yes. Sorry, uh, sorry, but about the uh, Arabic uh, stopwatch. Can you yeah. go back just for this the slide? Yeah, and it's a very large uh, collection, collection, but يعني, when I read it, some yeah, some words are يعني, maybe have uh, value in the sentence. Yes. For example, يعني, مساء أو خمسماء أو يعني, uh, sorry, يعني بتكلم بالعربي. شلون أقدر أحسب هن هي stop words بس ممكن تغير في معنى الجملة صح? Yes, yes, exactly. It's 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 the same in uh, in English. So sometimes, if uh, the days of the week, the days of the week, uh, for instance, you have here uh, to let out. So let me just yes, you have here the to let out. So the days of the week, uh, it's like it's this is the generic stop word. So it 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 contains as much as possible of. Uh, uh, words that is frequently used in in the text, like the days of the week, the numbers, um, um, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 time, evening, morning. So it's like you say, I woke up uh, early in the morning. I uh, um, I slept early uh, uh, this night or last night. So uh, it, it depends, but uh, you need to. Um, um, uh, to identify that if this is really useful for you or not. You can define your own list, by the way. Uh, if this list does not suit your uh, uh, your uh, your application. So this is the generic one. It's not uh, your job to define, OK, how I can define this is really important or can be considered on the stop word or not. It can be defined as like from the frequency list. You need to compute the frequency for all the words and you see how how many times it's mentioned in all documents. So if you have like in English, you have the word the, 
it's mentioned in all documents. So if you discard this word, it's OK because it's mentioned in all documents. But imagine that you have some word that is uh, has some some frequency. Yes, but it has it. It appears only on 30 percent of the documents. You cannot discard it. So you need to look at the. Uh, the frequency uh, of the text. And one way to do that is to, uh, I don't include it in this slides, but I can show you it's the, the term frequency, inverse document frequency, TF, IDF. So the term frequency, inverse docu document frequency is uh, some weighting scheme that can weight your words. So it can it consider the term frequency, how many these terms appeared in, in the documents, multiplied by the inverse document frequency. So the, the inverse document frequency, it's it's, uh, it's like how many documents here? It's one. We add here the log because we don't want to make this term to be zero. So we uh, add here the log and one plus and one plus in the um, above and one plus uh, below to make sure that these terms will not go to zero. So the document frequency, so imagine that you have 100 document and this document, this word appears in 30 documents uh, uh, of your corpus. So the inverse document frequency is uh, it's like, since it is uh, it's like in the, uh, 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 el -maqam, uh, I don't know, the, the nominator, dominate, uh, the nominator, I guess. Uh, since it's in the uh, maqam, um, it's it's uh, it it will have a high weight. So the TF IDF weight will be high. But for for the words that is the TF IDF weight is low, you can consider them as a stop word list. So you can compute it computationally based on the test statistic of your corpus, you can define if this word is um, uh, can be considered as a stop word or not. Okay, okay thank you, Doctor. Um, okay. So uh, the next term is the anagrams. The anagrams is that it's uh, Is a sequence of item for a given sample of text or a speech. It's really useful for text application and for speech application. So the items can be phonemes, syllable, letters, words, or uh, um, or base pairs. It's like according to your application. And the, the importance is that you can consider the anagrams as your feature and you can also use it to um, to identify the context and the and here you can you have one gram two grams three grams so that's why you have the and here so you have a, a, a it's like any number of grams you want up to seven grams if you want so it's a long sequence and with uh, as again with an LTK, we can generate the sequence of anagram. So we have this sentence. If you find this article useful, then blah blah blah. Okay. So the one gram is that you have only one token. If alone, you alone find alone, and so on. With biograms or two grams, you have the combination of pair of terms. Like if you you find find this, so you can compute that frequency by the way, and you see what are the most frequent two grams, and you can consider it. And the the this frequent uh, biograms you and you can discard it. It's like we have it a lot. Like uh, um, yeah, um, yeah, in English, we, you can say the cell phone. So that is um, most frequent uh, anagram that you can that you use it together. And in Arabic, we have some phrases like uh, 
Majlis al Shab. So uh, you 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 use this term a lot uh, together. And the three grams, it's like you you make your grouping in uh, three terms, three terms. And as you see here, if you find and you discard the F for the like for the next uh, three gram, okay, and you find this and so on. And this is really useful to have uh, some linguistic features in your text. So not only consider the words, uh, the single words as a feature, you can consider anagram features uh, uh, with your, uh, uh, in your application. The normalization, we speak about the normalization, but I, I want to emphasize that you can uh, uh, apply one of these, like either stemming or limitization and tokenization, uh, 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 etc. So it's like to normalize the text, you transform the text into a single uh, canonical form. Okay, I guess that is the, all uh, the terms that is frequently used in the natural language processing. I hope that you are now familiar with it. Now we can move to the QA. Any questions so far? Clear, Doctor. No questions, clear. Thank you. Okay. For the QA, the questioning answering system, consider this question. Who was the Australian third prime minister? Can you imagine that? So you define the third prime minister of Australia and you ask who was. And the Google extract the answer for you because it's written somewhere in the text. It's like John Christian Watson, born blah, blah, blah. And he was, he served as the third prime minister. So Google understand this. And that's why he extracted the answer directly for you. The, the, the main idea of the QA system that don't return article for me. Because it's like I don't have time to look into the article uh, because I, I, I just need a piece of information. I don't need to read the whole article to 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 extract this information by myself. Uh, it's like I'm a busy human being. I have so many things to do. I need some technique to help me to extract the answer for me. So the the the, the search engine uh, nowadays, it's like if you ask some question for the search engine, can return the exact answer for you, not the article for you. For, for you. And we showed last time an example like it's like how uh, far uh, uh, the, the the distance between the the moon and the earth, and you have the answer directly here. It's like I don't need to read a long article to know this information. That's the idea of the QA system. So for the search engine, is instead of returning uh, uh, it's like the whole text document, I don't need it. I need the just the answer. Okay, so that's the motivation for the questioning answering system. So with the massive collection, it's now really massive collection of full text documents on the internet. It's very huge. And you know this statistic, uh, how many data that is doubled in on the internet every every year. Now we have really, I don't know, it's like how can I describe how big it is? It's really massive, huge data we have on the internet. Okay, so instead of simply returning the relevant document, I don't need it. I need the answer. So I need the answer for my question. And that is really useful on mobile phone because you have a small screen, you don't have the time uh, and uh, 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 the capacity to read the whole text in a small screen. So that's why you 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 have now the digital assistants like uh, Google Assistant and Alexa and Siri. And I'm sure that most of most of you using this assistant uh, uh, now. OK, so we have we can factor this into two parts. It's like it's the classical search problem. Find the the, the relevant document that might contain the answer. OK, then find the answer in a paragraph or a document. And this task is called reading comprehension. This reading comprehension, it's uh, I'm sure that you 
you have this uh, 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 kind of uh, language skills in English language. So you have a reading comprehension questions where you have a paragraph and you have some question on this paragraph. And if you really understand the text, you can answer the questions, right? OK. So how what is the story of that? So we have a brief history of reading com comprehension. So uh, 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 it's like the early attempts for uh, for reading comprehension. It was in 1977. OK. And. Um, and. Uh, uh, and it's revived again in 1999. OK. And the question raised could NLB system write uh, answer human reading comprehension questions for third or seventh grades. It's really simple method. Uh, uh, it's like it's really simple questions and uh, the answer should be extracted easily for this level of uh, uh, like uh, um, questions. Uh, uh, um, uh, for schools, OK? And uh, it's like revived again in 2013 with MC test. So it's multiple choices test. So the, the idea again is to answer the questions over simple story text. OK, and uh, what happened so later? What, what do you mean by, so what do you mean by revived again? Like revived it? again, it's it's uh, yeah, yes. Revived again, it's uh, um, uh, in Arabic, it's uh, يعني تم إعادة إحياء هذه ال المسألة مرة ثانية في uh, uh, يعني أول مرة تم طرحها في ألفين و في ألف وتسعمائة وسبعة وسبعين تم إحياءها مرة ثانية في ألفين وتسعة من قبل هذا الباحث و و وطرح إنه هذه ال ال يعني هذه أول مرة إنه هو طرحها في هذا المشروع. آه، تاني مرة لما طر... تم طرحها في 1999 كانت إنه على المسائل البسيطة لطلاب المدارس الصف الثالث من الصف الثالث للصف السادس. So in these uh, years, uh, 19, from 1977 to 1999, uh, it failed. Wasn't successful. Uh, the, um, the first uh, um, uh, result that we have when we have this uh, in 2013, when you have the, this uh, MCQ test where you can evaluate really this method, but that, that was like a question raised in uh, it's like, uh, could NLP answer this reading comprehension question? So it's like a simple method. It was attempt for the simple method. OK, but here with this data set. There is an evaluation for that and uh, we can um, track the progress of this. So it's like you can consider, OK, by 2013 uh, we have um, a, a, a track of the progress for this task. So it was not uh, mentioned before. It's not really old task like information retrieval. Information retrieval, it's something uh, like uh, it's it's really sort uh, in, um, um, I would say in uh, like in in the first, uh, it's like in 2000, so it's like you have uh, in 1999, you have a lot of search engines and it's, uh, uh, the, the idea is that you should have an algorithm that extract the relevant document, but for the QA system, it's it's uh, information retrieval plus reading comprehension. So the reading comprehension itself as a question, it was first mention of it. It was 1977 and it's like there is the second mention of this problem again. And in 2013, we have a data set for that and we can try uh, the uh, like make people to develop some algorithm to uh, to uh, to uh, to extract the uh, the answers for simple questions from a uh, simple story text. Okay. Uh, okay. In 2016, that was by the way small small data set. 
In 2016, okay, uh, uh, with the production of large data set, it permit to uh, 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 which permit survive uh, survived neural networks to be built. That is, uh, we have uh, it's like the first deep mind uh, uh, CNN uh, data set, uh, DM data, data set, and also we have the squad. The squad, it's uh, some data set that is uh, developed. Uh, this is, by the way, a famous uh, conference in, uh, in natural language processing. Uh, they released this data set, okay, as uh, evaluation set, okay, and um, and uh, it's like to let uh, the researcher in the literature to develop some techniques, NLP techniques to solve this problem. And you have a lot of uh, trials here. You have uh, it's like this is the name of the systems. OK. OK, what we mean by reading comprehend. So a machine comprehends a passage of text for any question regarding uh, that the text, it can be answered correctly by the majority of native speakers. That means if you are a native speaker and you read the text, and if I ask you some question, you should be able to answer it. It's not uh, something like, uh, I don't know, it's like it's not scientific question and you should have some uh, knowledge in science or art to understand this. You just need only to understand, to read the text, okay? And the answer is the text, and you should be able to understand it. That is called, that is the, the, the reading comprehension. For a machine can comprehend a passage of text, uh, it's like that, that can be, um, uh, it's like for a questions uh, that can be answered correctly by the majority of human native speakers. So the point here, we can build a machine that can comprehend a text, okay? If the questions that we are asking uh, can be answered correctly by any native speakers, that is the point, okay? So uh, here the MCQ test, it's like if you try to understand what is the formulation of the, uh, of the data, because you need to feed the data to, to a machine learning model here, okay? So this is the input, okay? And this is the input, and the output is the answer. So you provide you provide the passage, okay? And you provide the question, and to the machine learning model with the answers, okay? So in the future, any passage with the question, the machine learning model should be able to extract the answer. That means the answer is in the text. So consider this story. So Elisa got uh, to the beach after a long trip and so on. OK, what was the question here? Why did Elisa go to Miami? So you continue reading. She is from uh, uh, this place. She traveled from Atlanta. She is now in Miami. OK, now she is in Miami. She wanted to uh, she went to Miami to visit some friends. So the answer is to visit some friends. OK, that means that the answer is in the text. So what you provide here for the QA, uh, so, yes, for the QA model here, this is, the. by the way, the QA model is a machine learning model. OK, so you provide the question. This is text. OK. And the passage, it's a, it is a text. OK, and the answer and the answer here is the index of the answer. What I mean by the index, it's like the, the character index. It's, it's here that, OK, here is the start. Oh, and here is the end. OK, so this is imagine that is the index. I don't know what would, would be the index, maybe like something like 40, 45. And this is here the, the end of the answer is something like let's consider this as maybe uh, it's like 60. OK, so you have the answer here as a pair of uh, output. OK, 
Yes. Sorry, Doctor. The index started from uh, two visits, some friends. Yes, exactly. Okay. It's from here. From. So my input would be the message and the question. Yes, and it's okay. in text format. And the output, because in machine learning model, you know that you should provide the 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 training data and and yeah. the the target. Uh, so the target. For us, it's it's a couple of uh, it's like 45. It's a tuple. It's a tuple of indices of the start and the end of the answer, which is in the message. OK. So Clear. the machine learning model to to really uh, 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 build a deep neural network to build the uh, to uh, it's like you need to train a deep neural network to really um, um, yeah, uh, uh, to 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 identify the indices of the answer for a given question that is the task and as you see here for any nlp problem if you it's like able to formulate it as a machine learning problem it's done it's it's like you uh, you should uh, take advantage of the machine learning algorithms and techniques that you learned and you can apply it. So that's that's the point. So uh, that's why uh, NLP is related to to machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence. It's uh, you need to make the machine learn how to understand text. Okay. Um, Okay, as usual, IBM always they start <coughs> their uh, the deep QA model in 2000, 2011. Okay, and also we have the Doctor QA, which is uh, uses uh, AR uh, IR uh, information information retrieval system to extract the most relevant document, followed by the reading comprehend. Uh, bringing deep uh, learning open minded uh, open domain QA system. Uh, yes, so that is the Stanford, the squad. And we have, we, we will, I will show you here the squad, how they make, uh, it's like with the availability of data set, you can make it, by the way. Uh, it's really important for the for the uh, natural language processing, if you want to make an advancement in the natural language processing, you should have a language resources, a data set, an annotated data set. So you open the door for the people to work on this task and improve, 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 and finally they will solve it. Uh, so this is the Stanford uh, 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 questioning answering data set squad that was created by Stanford University. It's a project that was developed by Stanford University. So this paragraph, it talks about, this passage talks about the private schools known as independent schools. It's non-governmental or uh, non-state schools and so on, okay? So along with non-governmental non and non-state school, what is another name for the private school? Can you, can you imagine how this question is complex? OK, so you have three names for one thing. You have the private school, independent, non-governmental, and non-state. And he mentions all the names, uh, it's like the two names, the non-governmental. So along with non-governmental and non-state schools, what is, the, uh, what is another name for the private schools? So you discard the private school and non-governmental and non-state. And you have it's like this answer, the independent school. So you have independent, independent schools. It's another answer, okay? And because in, in squad, you you need to to have three answers for every question because you can answer uh, the question in different ways. Let me go back here. So why did Elisa? Uh, go to Miami, you can answer my, it's like Elisa went 
to Miami to visit some friend. And you can answer directly to visit some friend. That's why for every question, you should have uh, three answers. OK, and if the answer is the same, you just repeat it as here. It's like along with sport and art, what uh, what is the, a type of talent uh, scholarship? So it's academic, academic, academic. You just repeat it. It's the same answer. So this is the gold answer for the machine learning. Uh, for the data set, so you you use it to train your classifier. OK. Um, uh, the third question, rather than taxation, what are private schools largely funded by? What is the source of their funding? So tuition, charging their students tuition and tuition. So it's. It's you have different answers for the same. Question and as you see here, the question is is a little hard. It's not like the MCQ, uh, the MC test. The MC test it's 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 a simple story as you see, and simple question, simple answer. But here, it's really challenging. It's really challenging for the machine. For for us as a human being, this is something. Uh, Intuitive. It's something really simple for us. It's it's like you don't you don't need to think twice to be able to answer to such questions. For but for the machines, it's really challenging to have such kind of questions. That's why creating this data set in 2016 it's really uh, it's 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 really um, a turning point. That's why it's it's really 2016 and for the QA it's a turning point. Really, it was like so. OK, how can I uh, evaluate the QA system? Any questions for so far? No questions. OK. Yes. OK, so the author collected three gold uh, answers for every question. So we have several ways to 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 measure the accuracy of the system. So the, the first method is the exact match match. So it's binary, so it's, it's like either you have the answer, the perfect answer or no. Um, yes. Um, just I have a question like uh, while training also, I mean, the, the system, um, uh, do they provide the, uh, the three answers or what they do? Um, yes, they, Did they provide. My question? Yes, 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 I, I got your question. And uh, that's that's the case also for machine translation, because for for such task, it's you, you don't have uh, it's like for machine translation. You don't have uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like there is different ways to translate one sentence. OK, and uh, to for evaluation. For evalu evaluation, that's why you, you should have. Uh, uh, it's like uh, yeah, I don't know how to describe this. OK, so um, so the answer for your question is that you provide uh, one answer, not the three answers. OK, but mm -hmm. for evaluation. For evaluation, you should compare with the three answers. So uh, if the system matches, it's like if, if the system generate an answer that matches one of the three gold answer, you consider it's, it's yes, exact match. If all of them, oh, oh, if the if the answer does not match with any of the three uh, uh, gold answers, then it's zero. And it's the same for machine translation. For machine translation, you provide the source sentence and the target sentence. As like it's a sequence to sequence model, as we described uh, last time. So for machine translation, you have. Uh, for machine translation, yes, you have a sequence of input and a sequence of output, OK? But for evaluation, you have the, it's like you, you, you uh, it's like compare the hypothesis 
with so many references R1, R2, R3, and so on, maybe up to five, R5. OK, and the reason for that is that because um, the translation itself, it's uh, it's 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 it's, um, it's a subjective. You ask a five translators to make a translation for a given sentences, and they should provide you with five different uh, translation for a given source sentence. And the idea to 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 fairly uh, evaluate the uh, the performance of the machine translation system, you should compare the hypothesis with uh, all the five references to have some uh, score that reflects the um, if the machine translation system really performs well or not. And it's the same for the QA here. It's uh, yeah, for for the uh, for the training. You need to only to provide the question and the passage and one answer, but for evaluation, you need to compare with the three uh, answers. I hope that answers your question, Dr. Nabil. But how, how you are going to get the uh, three gold answers? Like that's that's another point. How they get it? How they it's, know that? It's, hmm. it's it's created by this data set. So this data set is created manually by Stanford University and mm -hmm. you have the passage and have a set of questions for for that passage and you have uh, it's like for every question you there is uh, manually extracted uh, uh, um, uh, uh, three answers extracted from the for, for that questions okay and when they provide this for the training they don't give the three answers they give which one they give uh, like you can use uh, uh, it's like a random selection. You can select what? Sorry. Uh, you make a random selection. So, so random for, selection. Okay. Yes. So for the first instance, you provide the first maybe, and for the second question, you you provide the third, and so on. It's a random selection for the. But but the, the selections are from the uh, gold uh, answers or from where? Uh, yes. Mm. Uh, so uh, in that case, I mean, always they will uh, have some gold answer, I think. Because if you provide one of them, yes. that, that answer, if we keep training the system based on that gold answer, it means that when we test the system, we suppose that that one which we used for training uh, will be uh, as output, isn't it? Uh, the question again, Dr. Nabil. Uh, what I'm saying, I'm if we if we just give, uh, you said that we select the answer at, ran uh, at random, isn't it? This is what you yes. mentioned. Yes, Fine. yes. Now, now uh, when I ask the question, like from where we get this, you said it's just one of the gold answers. Fine. Now I yes. train my system based on the question and the gold, uh, one of the gold answers at, as random. Now, when I want to test my system, okay, uh, the system is going to, supposed to, according to our understanding and how the training is planned, it's supposed to produce the um, uh, one of these gold answers because I, I trained it randomly and because we, I think we keep, isn't it? We keep repeating the, the because it's like a box, right? Yes, so maybe, exactly. so one time maybe it is just uh, independent, the second time uh, independent schools, the third time, we don't know, it depends on randomness. Yes, uh, yes, exactly. Okay, but it's so like you need you need to consider first that uh, it's like we split the data into like test. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is we don't touch it. So we have uh, it's like uh, passages that is the system never seen, and mm -hmm. you keep their answers. Okay, and you have here so many passages. You have passage one, passage two, passage three several passages and for every passage you have q1 q2 q3 and so on so for every passage maybe you have maybe three four five seven questions i don't know it depends on the passage and you have their answers it's like for every question you have three answers a1 a2 a3 okay uh, so uh, like uh, it's like the training instance is composed of the question and the whole passage 
and one of the answers like this. But here, the test data is composed of several uh, paragraphs, several passages, sorry, okay, with, with the questions for sure. And for every question, you have three answers. So this is it's like never touched, never the system, never seen this passages at all. But here for the training, it's, it's like you should, you, you train the system, you start here and you repeat again, and uh, you repeat the training until you converge uh, to some uh, uh, accuracy that is uh, it's like uh, you consider it as uh, it's like a good accuracy. So uh, um, you you keep repeating the epochs as you said. Okay, and is it is it like uh, uh, should we um, or those people who tried this system and this data set like they keep uh, using the same domain or from various domains like no need I mean to have the same domain for the training and for the testing for example. This is comprehension, I know, so it might have like um, a different different I mean uh, kind of. Uh, um, uh, I don't know some uh, comprehensions. I mean, different uh, different stories. It, I would say. It, I would say the domain for this is public uh, uh, mm -hmm. open domain. It's it's like it's written here. Open domain questions. So mm -hmm. open domain questions is uh, it's like you ask uh, who is the president of the United States of America? Who was the third prime minister of? So on what is the distance between this city and that city? So it's really an open domain question. And the data they collected is it's uh, from from Wikipedia, I, I guess. And it's uh, it's like they divide it into parts. And for every part, it's like they consider it as a passage. And for every part, they manually uh, uh, formulate some questions. And for every questions, they provide answers. And if it is one answer, they just keep repeating the answers because it's a standard that they ha they should have uh, three answers. And by the way, this is uh, uh, an open domain uh, data set. Uh, you can have answer. You can have uh, a data set for a specific domain uh, for you. And um, and uh, yeah, let me jump here. It's it's they they create. Uh, it's like a leaderboard because since they uh, uh, keep this data set, they hide it, by the way, when they release the challenge, they hide it. So the researchers in the literatures, uh, uh, they don't know what is what's like how the, uh, the the test data set looks like. They developed their, their system, so they split this data into maybe train and and validation to like to validate their model and then when they like okay they feel that like the model is okay for them they submit um, the model for scoring so the the, the stanford university scored uh, the like all the participant uh, 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 machine learning models and that's not, that's how you can compare the work of uh, all the researchers. So by, by, by making uh, um, yeah, yeah, by making a challenge and a competition, and uh, it's like at the end of, of the competition, you declare the leaderboard. It's like who was like who is uh, it's like obtain the first uh, uh, rank uh, based on the evaluation score, which I was talking about here in the QA evaluation system. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if I answered it's like yes, your yes. question. OK, yes, yes. thank you. Uh, OK, so I was talking here about any questions so far for the about the QA. Don't hesitate, please. What's the clear? OK. <laughs> yes. OK, so the first method is to use the exact match. OK. So we can say that, OK, if the generic extracted answer matches with the one of the three gold sets, so it's one. Otherwise, it's zero. It's very simple. OK, 
the F1 score. The F1 score is that you uh, make uh, like the generated answer as a bag of word, and and you like uh, you you compute the precision and recall and the harmonic mean. That means that the generated answer you uh, like you you compute how many words that you have overlap in with the golden answer. OK, and with that you compute the precision and recall and the harmonic uh, mean the F1 score. Um, that means for. Let's take this example. OK, so imagine. Imagine that uh, it's like why, why, why did Alyssa uh, go to Miami? So imagine, uh, um, imagine that it's like uh, it's like gener the generated answer. It has a missing uh, word. Like it's like the generated answer is visit some friend. There is no two. Okay. So the generated answer. Uh, sorry, the extracted answer, not generated by the way, because text generation is a is a different task. So this is do does not exist. Okay. So you have. It's like overlap uh, between. It's like you 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 count how many words. This is one, two, three, four, four words. You have three matches of the words out out of four. Okay, uh, that's 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 how. What that that's what what does it mean by? Uh, uh, it's like that you take the the system. And the gold answer as a bag of word, and you uh, compute the precision and recall and the harmonic mean for every answer. That's that's more fair than the exact match, by the way, because sometimes you don't have the exact answer, but the answer can be it's like fine, can be acceptable. Okay, so that's why uh, F major seems to be more realable. OK, so that's why it's uh, it's like the evaluation uh, because we we have here two evaluation score, the exact match and the F score. They are looking at the F scores, like how they define that. OK, this is it's like the rank number one, ra rank them number two. It's based on the F score, not based on the uh, uh, exact match. OK. Um, OK. OK, so why it's uh, you, you, you remember I said that like when Stanford released this data set squad data set is it's a turning point. OK, because like the F score. By that times like the best of the state of the art system was before. 2016 uh, uh, because they released it in 2016 and they made the competition in 2017. So as you see here, it's like the uh, when you have a really golden data set that researchers can work on, they can find the solution. They can, they can improve it because they they keep working and tuning machine learning system and uh, to find a way to improve the result. And that's why you have a significant improvement. It's it's a big jump as you see here. OK, and the one who uh, when the competition it was uh, uh, google ai the score was 19 uh, 91.8 and can you imagine the human score it's 91.2 that means even a human can make mistakes in this task can you imagine that and you I, i'm sure that you know that I, i'm sure that you passed an english uh, a language uh, test exam or it's like an English language exam and you have a reading comprehension and sometimes you like you don't pick the right answer. It's it's normal. We are humans. OK, and. Uh, so it's it's just solved. surprising that. Yes. Surprising that the, that Google is يعني, uh, better than the human. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So this problem is solved. As you see, it, it's it's in 2000, uh, uh, 
uh, 18 with the PERT model. You will hear that uh, word a lot, the PERT model. OK, well, I will show you, by the way, some of the PERT model on hugging face. But it's it's the problem is solved as you see here in the in the leaderboard. It's like the human performance is 19.2, uh, sorry 91.2, and the PERT model, the ensemble model with that developed by Google AI, it's it's the score was uh, 93. So the machine can answer better better than us because. Um, Again, with the human, uh, with with the with the language resources, you can like do a lot. Uh, that's that's why important. If you want to work on uh, natural language processing, please think about the language resources for the task that you are working on. If it is there, then it's okay. You can like start right away, and you can develop your machine learning model, and you can you can compare with others. And you can find a way. I'm sure that you can find a way to improve. But if there is no language resources, that's that's the question. If there is no uh, language resources for the task that you are you, that you want to work on, especially for Arabic, please create it. Please create a language resource for that. And by the way, uh, let me just mention this important conference in the natural natural language processing field. Uh, Ulrich. So Ulrich, it's an association for uh, um, evaluating language resources. So uh, this is a biannual conference that is uh, like held in uh, like every two years and every year it's in one place. I participated in this conference twice. Uh, it's like the first one, it was in Iceland in 2014. And uh, the second one is the 2016, but it was uh, not me who participated. It was a colleague, uh, it's like a, the, the co-author of mine. And uh, and uh, if you create some uh, a language resource uh, for a specific task, for a specific language, for low resource languages, you will hear that a lot because you will hear what does it mean low resource languages? The languages that have low resources uh, 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 for the natural language processing uh, uh, work. So you can create that resource and so people can use it and can um, uh, develop some NLP techniques. So like if you, uh, um, the point here is that if you uh, came up with some research about natural language processing, language resources, this is the best place that you publish uh, in, okay? I think, Dr. Matez, I think you have uh, uh, developed the corpus before, right? Uh, as yes. I remember. No. Yes, yes. Uh, it's like the corpus, the, the corpora that I have, it's, uh, I can give you a brief, uh, wait a second, yes, 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 yes. We have, uh, by the way, dialectal corpus, so it's, So here we collected uh, uh, Arabic tweets for sentiment analysis. OK. And here, by the way, uh, it's like Arab uh, uh, dialect ID. This is Madar. Madar, by the way, it's an Arabic organization for, uh, uh, it's an Arabic institute to develop uh, a human, uh, for, to develop uh, language resources for Arabic, Arabic language. They released a shared task. So the shared, it's like the importance of the, the competition and the shared task is that it's like you uh, make a data set for the people and they compete and they share the result and uh, it's like you make an advancement for a, a given task. So that, that task was to uh, dialect, dialect identification. And the dialect identification, it was uh, two grains. It's uh, fine grain and, uh, and coarse grain. 
fine fine grain it means it's like for the gulf dialect you need to identify okay this is bahraini this is saudi this is uh, emirati and so on and for the coarse grain you need to identify okay this is gulf this is maghribi maghribi it means maghribi lahjat maghribiya the the maghribi dialects it means there's like one of these morocco algeria Tunisia, Libya, and uh, Egypt, you have uh, the one and uh, 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 the Shami dialect. Okay. And by the way, we obtained the first, uh, we are, we were the like uh, score number one in this task in uh, dialect identification. You can have a look on this paper uh, uh, and all the details are available on the GitHub, as I told you. Uh, you can find me on the GitHub. You can find this work, uh, it's like the source code and the paper published and on the GitHub. So it, uh, it's like if you want to do research on dialect or language identification, you can use that. Uh, you can have a look on that and you can reuse the source code. So that is... Uh, so, sorry, Doctor. How yes. long it, take, it takes for you to achieve this uh, article and the collection and to achieve this task? It's, uh, in fact, it was uh, uh, like the, ta the shared task. It's, it's, I think it's a three month. Uh, it's like okay. since they released the data and uh, it's like to the time to submit the results. It's a very interesting yani, competition. Yeah. Uh, um, just, could yes. we uh, just stop, excuse me, could we stop just for a break because... Uh, yes, 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 okay. okay. So we can maybe inshallah continue after like 15 minutes, uh, like uh, last time. Yes, yes, okay. So we go back, we return at... Uh, yes. Uh, 55? Yeah, okay, fine. Okay, 55. yes.